Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm very gratified to have on the phone Ivan Babak. He's the executive chairman and co-founder of Orin Resources. And the reason I wanted to get Ivan on the phone today is to talk about what's going on with these mining stocks because you need look no further than the 2016 GDX chart to see that the smart money is getting into mining stocks. As we've talked about a lot, once people return to real money, the smart money will leverage the return on increasing gold prices with gold stocks. That GDX chart just over the past month has flown from around 13 to over $18. Ivan, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's a real pleasure. You know, you're a real gold resource entrepreneur and people should understand that this is neither a solicitation or a recommendation to buy your stock, but I have been trying to get people on the line who are experts in the area of mining stocks, finding gold, because we're big believers in real money, honest money. We can see what the central banks are doing with their fiat funny money printing presses, our nation's $19 trillion in debt. You're up there in Canada. Of course, I'm down here in the United States and we're trying to keep an eye on the Federal Reserve. And now we're seeing guys like Larry Summers say, let's ban $100 bills. That's a great idea. Now they're gonna start moving towards our cash. So I think before we get started, I would say this, Ivan, you have a friend in central bank Bankers. Negative interest rates, which is what they want to move the world toward, will drive billions, if not trillions, into gold. You think that sounds about right? Absolutely. Um, there's um, well, there's two factors, right? There's the, the macro picture. There's the currencies. There's the negative interest rates. There's that factor, and then there's something going on in the gold market, which. As you know, the gold market's been somewhat oppressed for the last five years. Um, what we saw, and I'll give you a bit of how we look at it as explorers, as people going out to find these gold mines, and is what the majors are doing, and what's going to drive the gold price even further, is in high times where gold was $1,900 an ounce, a lot of these majors were able to finance and mid-tier gold companies, and they were able to establish a lot more production of gold. And obviously, if there's a huge amount of supply of gold in the world, regardless of the macro impacts, it's going to affect price. That price or that increase of supply has been increasing over the last five years dramatically, and it actually peaks at the end of this year going into next year, and then there's a massive decline. And what's happened is the gold price has gone the opposite direction up until recently, and the gold production has gone in the, in the upward direction. And so where we see things going forward is in low gold prices, major gold mining companies tend to high grade their mines. They mine the sweetest, the richest parts of those mines, and sometimes that can impact future abilities to produce. That's where there'd be a massive decline in production. That's what we anticipate to happen next year. While all of these banks are lowering rates and the economies are in the state that they're in, we see the actual gold supply being affected dramatically because of the last five to 10 years of what's happened in the gold market. So we as entrepreneurs, we find our market timing for gold, you know, outside of the obvious reasons, but more on the mining side because no gold's been discovered, nobody was exploring for gold, Gold's been produced, but that's about to change dramatically to the points I just made. We see a dramatic change in the gold market from the exploration and from the mining side, which coupled with the economic side will create that legendary gold market we've waited for for the last 15 years. Yeah, we're seeing many of the same trends. And uh, again, I have to hit on that GDX Gold Miners ETF, Market Vectors Gold Miners ETF. Are you shocked to see what's been going on with that GDX over just the past month? I mean, that's a shocking return in a short time. But we've been waiting for this for a very long time, Ivan. We've been following the gold and silver story for, well, through the entire bear market, you know, and uh, we didn't expect the bear market to last this long. It appears to be turning as the world wakes up to endless debt for all of the nation states and central banks whose only solution is to print more. I completely agree. I followed both of the same and one comment I'll make towards how it lasted a bit longer than we all anticipated. I imagine it is a big springboard that's being pushed down and that's the gold price. And I think what you saw was a little move of what's to come. And before any big move in gold, we've always seen extreme volatility or volatility pick up. This was just a taste of what's to come in the next few years. I think we'll look back at this and we'll be reflecting on how minimal this move was compared to what's going to happen as we go forward and more of these economies with the debt and everything goes into real effect of what's really come ahead. So I think the last five years we've waited longer for this gold market to come back than anticipated, but it's pressed a bigger spring down. That's why the violent move to the upside in gold recently, and it's a great indication of more to come. 
Yeah, and uh, our friends at GATA have been saying so long, Bill Murphy has been saying, gold, the gold price, the silver price is like a big giant, Peter Schiff has been saying this, the gold, silver prices are just like a giant beach ball held below the waves, held below the water. And when that beach ball is released, it just shoots higher by pure velocity of being held down for so long. Does it surprise you to see nation states like China and Russia hoarding gold really at this point, getting their hands on gold phys in physical form just as fast as they can? And other nation states like Germany telling the New York Fed, hey, we want our physical back. Does that trend surprise you? You know what? Um, I, I think it's a smart money trend. I think they can see where their countries are going, where the world economy is going. And I think that does not surprise me at all. I think it's it's surprising how late they are to the party, but you know, late to a very small door to go and you know get a bit of gold that's out there. It's going to be a, a pretty remarkable reaction when that all comes to fruition and, and we get into the gold market. But uh, no, it's certainly not a surprise, except for that it took a little bit longer than I thought. They're just positioning themselves for what's to come, and that's what they have to do. And getting back into the gold trade, into the gold business, and hoarding gold, they're doing that because uh, they see a very big gold market coming ahead like the rest of us. Yeah, and we're talking about physical gold. You're not out there looking for paper gold, are you? No, we're looking for physical gold because all paper gold's based off of physical gold and you're best off to own the, own the horse, you know, and that's, that's going to be physical gold. If you were to call all the gold and order all your physical gold up in the world, I, I wouldn't have to explain to you what might happen there, but I'm quite sure that there's a lot leveraged off of the physical gold that's there right now, and physical gold is king for us, and that's what we're going to find. And you know, and and the capacity, what we're looking for is not small. We're not. We've had two major successes before, Oren. We're looking for world class. We're looking for a 10 plus million ounce gold district in Canada. You know, one of the best jurisdictions to be in. There's a million plus million ounces of their of gold already there before we're getting even started and it's averaging a very rich value of about eight grams per ton most gold mines in the world are around one to two grams per ton we're looking at eight grams per ton or more up in the in northern canada what are you guys in the business of are you mining gold currently um we're actually in the business of finding gold mines and um, we actually do it in the flesh and we look for commercial economic gold mines that become world-class gold deposits that people will have gold from for many years. And uh, why we focus on the finding of the gold mines versus the producing of the gold mines is because that's the steepest return on investment. Um, the actual discovery of a major gold mine is what makes shareholders the 10, 20, and 30 times their money in a, in a good gold market. Well, actually, Avin, I have an amusing soundbite I want to play for you. Are you familiar with the show that's now on Showtime? It's called Billions. Have you followed that show at all? No, I haven't heard it yet. Okay, well, it's uh, it came onto my radar because I listened to a podcast uh, with a writer, uh, the Koppelman podcast. It's a little convoluted, but listen to this soundbite. I think you'll really appreciate it because, again, it's sort of the mainstream media version of how they see gold, right? It's the mainstream spin. In the show Billions, this billionaire hedge fund manager uh, is really king of the world and his nemesis played by Paul Giamatti is trying to target him and take him down. Okay. It sort of plays into the whole anti-banking thing although it really skirts around the issue of how the big banks are really true criminal banks. Listen to this soundbite from the opening of I think it was episode three. Looking forward to it. No, Peter Gold Standard is never coming back and if it did this world would be so fucked up by space travel not gold. Nice pitch though. If I'd have known it was a gold play, I'd have never put him through. Always put that little tick through. One out of every 200 ideas he has is fucking brilliant. One out of every 200 ideas he has is brilliant, but nothing to do with gold. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I, I'm actually I can't wait to go watch it later on. That's a that's a that's <laughs> you know there's one thing and I'll say this is that the media is pretty good at staging the markets too by accident. They make shows around things that are going to happen that are happening like this show billions and gold right and they start to highlight those things. Um, I I I'm we're preaching to the choir us gold bugs that talk to each other and believe in the gold market but. It is really coming. And what blew my mind in the last gold market was when you took the 2011 $1,900 gold run and you took the market cap of all the gold companies in the world, they would have fit into one big tech company on the NASDAQ. Mm -hmm. That's how small the world gold investing market is, right? And so when you look at the size and the scope of the money that can come into the gold market and you ask yourself, where do I put my money? Where do I, where am I going to go with it? Where can I make the biggest returns? Because they're certainly going to be there and it's cyclical. We're coming back to the cycle. That's great. But 
the door on the way out and the door on the way in, it's really small. We saw the pain as it crashes, but when it comes back, that's what you're going to see going forward. That door is so small, there's maybe 10 companies worth buying in Vancouver that are on the junior side looking for gold mines that will find them in various sizes and various grades in good parts of the world. Those choices will be the, the 10, the 20, the 30 baggers that people see over the next two years. Beyond that, you'll start to see everything in the pennies go to the dollars, everything in the dollars go to the double digits. That's going to follow suit. But that first wave is the wave where so much money comes in and it really comes down to the company's asset and the management's experience. Have they done this before? And that's something that I separate us from a lot of the other companies. Um, we've done this before twice. We know what it takes to deliver. We have an incredibly deep technical team, um, all ex Newmont, PhD geologists, 30, 40 years experience. These guys are brilliant. Not only did we find the best gold asset, we found the best geologist to go and discover more gold in that asset. There's enough gold there to call it a real deposit that could potentially be a mine. But what its look is on the upside is something unscalable in our own mines. And that's going towards a rising gold market. So this is our biggest swing. I don't think we'll be able to buy it or get a better gold asset. I don't think we'll be able to get a better gold property in our careers and our lifetimes. And the only reason why we got this one was because of the oppressed gold market. And now we get to explore it in the best gold market yet to come. Yeah. When we talk about paper gold, and I just want to mention the work of Adrian Douglas, you know, he was taken from us too early because he got cancer. And of course, he got the cancer after doing remarkable research indicating that the bullion banks are leveraged at least 60 ounces of paper gold for every one ounce. And that was back in 2009, 2010. Now, the quantifiables suggest that these bullion banks are leveraged well north of 100 paper ounces per one ounce of gold. So if everybody who had a paper claim stood up right now and said, I want my physical, like Kyle Bass did for the University of Texas, it would be a run on the bullion banks. And by virtue of that, probably a run on all of the uh, international banks with their derivatives. I mean, take a look at what's happening uh, to Deutsche Bank. Um, what do you make of the paper gold shenanigans that are out there? And what's the best recourse people have to combat that paper criminality, essentially? So if you remember back in 2011, that run to $1,900 gold, um, I actually live half in the U.S. My wife's American, so I was on both sides of the border and I was following it. There was such a big demand physically for gold in Vancouver, in Toronto, and New York, and down in California, in Phoenix, and people could not keep up with the gold bars that people were trying to buy, with the physical gold that was trying to be bought. Even myself personally, I went out to go buy some gold bars because you know I was trying to add to my physical gold holdings, and uh, what happened there was uh, it was on back order. And what happened there, the price went to $1,900 an ounce. So I think the, the math of the physical leverage with paper, paper gold, I think is real obvious. I think the, the general gold investor or the countries and the banks, there's going to be a bit of an anxiety towards not having it physically, just having it paper-wise. And I think the fact that there's a lot of paper gold, it can actually give a lot of room for some um, you know, misconceptions of what really out, is out there for demand and it can kind of manipulate a bit of the gold market. But I think what investors have grown smart of is uh, owning physical gold is real. Owning paper gold is paper. You know, So I think that's going to be what you see happen again in the coming years. And we see that excel when the gold price goes up. And the gold price is starting to go up physical demand will go up and we all know what that will do to the market and as I mentioned before if there's decreasing mine supply worldwide starting in 2017 that's scheduled or anticipated unless there's a major change to continue for the next five or ten years imagine what that does to all of these factors at the same time I'm a contrarian by nature um, I'm a contrarian in a bull market and I'm a contrarian in a bear market however I've gone on the right side of the market a few times and for me, the last three or four years have been the best shopping season of possible. To buy gold assets as a chairman of a public company, as we're doing now, as we just did, we bought a company that was worth $200 million a few years before for $18 million. The infrastructure alone that's already at site where we're about to go and find this, or hopefully find a gold mine that we're speculated to go find, would cost us $30 million. We bought that company for pennies on the dollar. That's the kind of shopping we're doing, we've done, and some of the smart money is doing in our business. That's something that I think all investors should take note of is it's a lot, you make a lot more money if you buy things in the early stage of any market that's about to start or about to come. All we needed in the last five years was confidence of a turn in the gold market. 
I think if you look at last year's cyclical or seasonal highs, these ones are higher than last year's. There's a lot more macro impacts worldwide, things that are affecting the gold price that are becoming more evident. We feel we've crossed the turn of the decrease in gold market. It's funny that we talk positively about gold now and everyone comes out to, to agree with us finally, which is great, but I have not heard anyone saying that this gold bear market is going to continue. I haven't heard that for a few months now. You know, November was the last sell-off in gold and stocks were hit, the equities were hit, but I don't hear anybody right now at all saying that gold's not going to go up. And in fact, this morning I was getting inboxes of, of various people that were shorting gold, predicting $900 an ounce that have now flipped the other way. And when you see shorts start to cover, start to plan for a long-term bull rally in gold, you know, that's, that's a very good indicator. We have not heard or seen this in the last five years. It's finally happening now. We're in the now. This is the start of the turn. And it's a very small door, meaning there's very few gold investments to make. In a few years, there'll be several choices there'll be hundreds of gold companies like ourselves or even thousands like there were before but that first wave is where all the money's made and you can go back to 2002 2003 2004 and you look at the first wave you look at what happens when gold starts to move what happens to gold equities the 100 the 200 the thousand the ten thousand percent returns those all can happen from this point forward as we go forward into the gold market, there will still be great returns for years. It will be the place to put your money. But at the same time, the early few years now and the next two years will be where most of the money is made percentage-wise. Yeah, that's interesting. So you've described capitulation uh, among shorts, which is a sign that we need to pay attention to. It's a sign we've essentially been waiting for, much as is the sign that these mining stocks, according to the GDX chart, at least in the last month, have also turned in these other companies you mentioned, uh, Barrick Gold and, and others, uh, performing so well over the past three months. And yes. That's where the smart money is, right? The smart money inevitably leverages the price rise in any commodity through shares, through stocks. And if you pick the right stocks, you can do extremely well. Now, so many of us out there uh, in the average Joe investing public have been so snake bitten by stocks so often, maybe by design, right? With this last 2008, 2009 meltdown, people got so badly hurt and people have been so badly hurt in mining shares since that they're gun shy. And so now we only see the smartest of the smart money and the most well-heeled individuals, maybe in investors, hedge funds, getting into mining stocks. What would you say to the man who's been bitten and rebitten and really hurt by this bear market and by just these crashes in general in the, in the wider stock market? What would you say to average Joe investor? Does he dare wade into the mining stocks pool? I think that that average investor can do look at one simple thing in, in the comment I made We'll pick on Barrick, for example, one of the biggest gold companies in the world. Everyone knows it. Um, I believe they were around eight or nine dollars Canadian in November, and they went up to sixteen and a half, seventeen dollars uh, a week ago. Um, in the last five years, you have not seen Barrick or Newmont or Gold Corp or any of those major gold companies provide that kind of return and that kind of a window because the market wasn't ready to come back yet. They would fluctuate up and down, but never a hundred percent return in a few months. That move for me is a great indicator to see that kind of returns on the biggest gold companies in the world as a start. That gives me the confidence that there's a real turn happening. I follow money out of New York. I follow money out of Toronto. I follow money in Europe and I'm listening and I've looked for it and I've followed it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right now we get incoming calls for investments more than outgoing calls to look for investors. And that's something that is another sign. So I think for that average investor that has a few thousand dollars to invest, I think you want to buy into it, you want to invest over the next two or three years, you want to buy it, you want to put it away, and you want to look forward to a steady chart that goes in the right direction properly, and at some point, you're going to turn back and be like, you know, that was the right time. Why was it wrong a year ago? Why was it wrong two years before that? There wasn't enough of a move, and there was still a lot of pain to come out of these major mining companies. There was a lot of debt issues. There was inflationary costs caused mines, gold price to come up and go back down. All of those problems have been filtered out. Our market has been completely humbled from its cost of operating and doing business. We are at the bottom where it's the cheapest time possibly to drill, to go build your projects, to go build your mines. The mining market is in the belly of the sell-off of the low, and the majors are starting to show returns of near 100% in a few months. That's my indicator that this market is going to start turning in a big way. Yeah, and one of my last questions for you is really just your reaction to, uh, maybe you saw this, maybe you didn't, but I'll recap. Ron Paul was grilling Ben Bernanke a few years ago, and he asked Bernanke why central banks hold gold. 
And Bernanke, of course, not wanting to admit that physical gold is money. It's really the only money, and it's been money for 5,000 years. But, of course, he couldn't say that because he's in charge of the fiat funny money printing press. His response was, it's tradition. It's really just tradition, uh, to which Ron Paul laughed, and so did we all. I think, finally, the men behind the curtain have been revealed, and to say gold is nothing more than a tradition is a sign of desperation, and it's no longer working, is it? Yeah, I think that's over. I think they can't. I think that that whole case, that case in point, it lasted for some time. Five, six years ago, they got onto that page, and now they can no longer say it. And when you have China, when you have Germany, when you have Europe, when you have all these world economies believing that it's not a tradition, that they need to own it as a currency, it doesn't matter what they say, what they would say, because the demand is so big worldwide, it's calling it as you know a must own. And that's what's happening now. So I think that's the real obvious nature is the actions are bigger than words. The world is hoarding gold. They're starting to go long gold. I think that's exactly what's happening. So that defeats that, that old argument that they were making. Yeah. Well, you came onto my radar because I follow and interview. I'm fortunate enough to be able to interview some very, very smart people. Uh, I've even interviewed Eric Sprott. And uh, so you came onto my radar for obvious reasons. I really appreciate your time. And I guess my last question would be for you this. In an era moving towards negative interest rates, as we mentioned at the beginning of the interview, negative interest rates is the ultimate reason to own physical gold and silver, is it not? Because prior to negative interest rates, the claim Warren Buffett would make when he called gold a barbarous relic is that it doesn't pay interest. There's no reason to hold it. In an, in an era of negative interest rates, you get paid to hold it. Yeah, and you've got to pay to leave your money in the bank. So where would you rather have your money? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're right. You have to pay to keep your money in the bank. Keep your money in the bank at negative rates. Yeah, that's right. Think, think about that reality, you know, and think about what that's saying and think about where the money's going to go. But negative interest rates, you will do extremely well with gold in economy with negative rates. And that's where we're headed already in Europe and I think pretty soon here. Yeah. And I just want to say one last thing, guys. I don't own the stock, but Ivan, after this conversation, I may have to just dip my foot in the pool because if I don't, in three, four, five years out, I see your stock trading, you know, to the moon, I'm going to be really sick to my stomach that I didn't get a piece. You know what? Um, I really appreciate that. We are swinging really, really hard at the fences, but we're doing it with two successful companies behind us. This is our third time doing something that we've done before extremely well, but it's by far the best asset we were able to acquire, and that's because of the last five-year gold market that we were in. So our plans and our ambitious here are to supersede the past successes dramatically from what they were before. That's what we're going for. We'd love to have you as an investor, and uh, I think you'd, you'd, you'd be in for a good speculation on uh, a company that could do extremely well. Well, I really appreciate your time, and I think you're on the TSX as AUG, correct? The current symbol is AUG on the TSX, and the US symbol is GGTCF. Okay. Our guest has been Ivan Babek. He's the executive chairman and co-founder of Oren Resources. Thank you so much, Ivan. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for the interview. Yeah, thank my you. pleasure. And guys, thank you so much for your support at sgtreport.com. Real news 24-7. And thanks for checking us out at thelibertymill.com and thephaser.com. Have a terrific week ahead. Bye-bye.